And welcome to a special New Year's-ish edition of Archive Thrifting. And you're probably sitting there going, Hey, Benny boy, didn't you just do one of these things? Yeah, yeah, I did. I just put one out two weeks ago. But I figured, since I've got the footage, why not? We'll do something a little different for that week between Christmas and New Year's this year. So, admittedly, this is kind of a grab bag of footage, but uh, hopefully it plays out okay. So, we've got segments from three stores here. The first one I actually shot back in, I believe, late September when I was trying to start to gather footage for the Halloween thrifting episode. And I put it on the back burner because I had plenty of other footage and more seasonally appropriate footage. The second segment, I got like five minutes too late for the Christmas thrifting video a couple weeks ago, and it was just as well because I already had a segment's worth of footage for that particular store. And then for the final segment, it's really just kind of hot off the presses here. So with that, enjoy this uh, bonus of sorts edition of Archive Thrifting. Kicking things off with my twice annual, because the selection doesn't turn over a whole lot, trip to First Cash and Exchange. Well, I guess I'm obligated to cover Gene Tracy now, aren't I? I just don't know how, exactly. I swear his albums follow me around more than those Stan and Doug albums. And no, I am not happy about it. Otherwise, even though I don't have the gear, I do tend to pick up these quadraphonic 8-tracks when I find them, regardless of genre and that sort of thing. This one looked to be in decent shape. Now, once upon a time, I collected these weird 8-track cleaning cartridges. Then I realized how stupid it is. But uh, this one has a weird mechanism to it. That accounts for something. I guess. Only found one semi-noteworthy VHS tape, Christmas with Abbott and Costello on AIMVEST, uh, you know, home of the happy hamster. Anyway, this is the duo's holiday-ish appearance on the Colgate Comedy Hour. Watch out for snakes. Yeah, this is an unwelcome blast from the past for me. But uh, seriously, though, either someone's band or staging company went tits up. Because it wasn't just these glorified extension cords, it was a bunch of uh, ghetto Daleks as well. Or, uh, lights. A VHS deck meant for your car, or just the world's cheapest deck? Debate amongst yourselves. Part of me would like to pick up one of these ancient karaoke machines. The thing is, once I covered on archive, it would just take up loads of space around here. Or it would go right back to the junk shop or Goodwill or whatever. Yeah, not doing that. Well, it wouldn't be South Dakota without CEDs. Anyway, I may have to go back for this copy of Street Music, if only because it's apparently pretty rare. And uh, yeah, once again, we're just calling them laser discs. But otherwise, it's mostly stuff I don't care about or would only accept on other formats. Given how tied up in actual laser discs MCA was, I've always found it amusing they license their stuff for their, you know, direct competitors. But uh, I'll get back to that one. I actually liked my favorite year, and I've already got that on, uh, Betamax. But anyway, getting back to the Marx Brothers, I doubt Sven Gulli watches Archive, but I'd really love to see him bring back the old tradition of running Marx Brothers movies at New Year's, and I'm sure he has zero control over that. Mixed in with the LPs was a work pad for your records. Alas, it wasn't priced accordingly. But as it turned out, these things flee bay for around 50 bucks, which makes no sense whatsoever. It's just an anti-static pad. 
step up and step down converter, which is tempting as hell, but I fear a fire from, you know, overdrawing power. Yeah, one of those occasions where the Europeans really have the advantage over North America. And the haul from this store consists of two 8-tracks, one from truck stop comedy god Gene Tracy, still sealed, and below that, a quadraphonic compilation of pop country stuff from Capitol Records. Then one VHS tape, Christmas with Abbott and Costello, for the Aimvest collection, and lastly, just for the hell of it, the Marx Brothers Animal Crackers on CED, which I already have on, funnily enough, Laserdisc. And on to savers, or a very good facsimile thereof. Something was weird with the light when I shot this, uh, made it look downright dreamlike. In the records, uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford's religious stuff, which never ceases to amuse me, uh, from grim country records to kind of cutesy religious records. But uh, otherwise, uh, well, there's a shocker. Public Image LTD, live in Tokyo, and it was in great condition. I mean, it's not supposed to be one of their better efforts, but uh, I'll take it. It kind of depresses me to see that all these guys will apparently be remembered for is he just kept on yelling. Now, uh, the next one I pull almost went into the record ripoff's candidate pile, but it appears to be someone's attempt at a regular old country album, not some compilation, despite that label that it's on. And speaking of country, they had one of Jerry Lee Lewis's later country albums in there. Grandpa Jones's Yodeling Hits. I checked it out on YouTube, and uh, the title is accurate enough, but just barely. Now, despite the title, this is just a regular Gary Lewis and the Playboys album, and not a Greatest Hits. I actually do have their Greatest Hits, and it's barely worth it. Now, a little deeper into the pile, I found an album that I've got a knockoff album with uh, this cover replicated, and it's been in the record ripoffs bin for a while, but uh, yeah, that's the real deal. Anyway, uh, you can get that one, the Bonnie and Clyde soundtrack album, on Discogs for a penny and shipping, but I'd never seen that one in the wild before. Otherwise, uh, boy, that just looks upper Midwestern, doesn't it? Still deeper into the records was someone we've had our little run-ins with before, Justin Wilson and his Cajun cooking. Otherwise, I found some music to install your new refrigerator to. Or, uh, wait, uh, Admiral made stereos, apparently. Home to one of the best worst singles of all time, Mary McGregor's Torn Between Two Lovers, and uh, Lionel Richie's solo debut, which, believe it or not, I already have on CD. And a little deeper still in there was one of Flip Wilson's earlier albums, and it was kind of scratched up, but uh, the cover looked nice, though. In the electronics, a very lonely-looking speaker. Allegedly, they had the pair, but I only found this one. It reminds me of my old speakers. And uh, it is nice to see them bringing the price of their TVs down. 14 bucks for that Sony, that's fair. And I mean, seriously, in the past, I've seen them try and sell these things for like 150, 200 bucks. Oh, hey, uh, one of those shoe shine thingies made by Dremel. Wonder if it makes Dremel sounds. Initially, I thought I found a random milk container, but uh, no, it's full of rocks and plugs in. So uh, it, it must make rock music. Otherwise, uh, a random early iPad smart sleeve. Nothing but the finest around here. But the real attraction in the electronics section was the world's cheapest stereo. GSC brand, AM, FM, radio, and cassette. And stuff like this makes me want to compete with dank pods. I'd call it dank stereos. I'd imagine it would get pretty boring pretty quickly, though. 
Oh, hey, I've been after an analog-ish metronome for a while now. I had a fully digital one for a while, and that sucker died on me pretty quickly. Now, obviously, I don't carry batteries with me, you know, to test stuff with, so this was a bit of a gamble at five bucks, but it just looked so nice and clean that I took the gamble, and it paid off. Works beautifully, uh, if a bit loud. So, uh, electrical tape, here I come. And the haul from this store consists of the aforementioned Matrix brand metronome, real nice and clean. Under that, found off camera, was a knockoff compilation to cash in on George Harrison's concert for Bangladesh. Now, it was a little more scratched than I would have liked, but I just, I have to hear how they mangled Bangladesh and their stab at a Shankar-styled raga. And lastly, the Public Image LTD Live in Tokyo LP. As always, I'm stuck on the outer edge of the Goodwill parking lot. It's just as well, I mean, the holidays are a time for tradition. In the CDs, we've got a uh, rather infamous 90s compilation. Music today is everywhere. No need to label it. If it's good, we'll play it. That's why we got Living in the 90s. Two and a half hours of the coolest songs on two CDs and two cassettes. Check it out! And nothing says 90s nostalgia like a compilation released in 1995. Now, one of the discs was a bit scratched, but I've got a whole stack of CDs to take to the video game store for resurfacing anyway, so I'll add it to that. It was $1. For the record, Ripoff's Pile, Mambo No. 5 by the Countdown Singers. And I guess this was about the time where it started to take six people to write a song and another six to produce, and the song still sucks anyway. Record making by committee. Otherwise, more 90s compilation goodness. I found one of those Time Life Body Talk albums, and dare I admit, I've got most of these songs already elsewhere. But uh, yeah, it was just a big-time 90s throwback kind of day here. I saw some names I hadn't seen in years, like Take That and Joshua Caddison. Names that will mean squat to our younger viewers. And uh, kids, you're not missing much. Anyway, this looks like a potential local flavor candidate from Linda Petty, a, a cabaret sort of thing, but it ain't local and it didn't look quite weird enough, so I passed. Aside from that, I found a, a little bit of a leftover from the most recent record ripoffs. C.W. McCall, uh, the real thing though. Alas, the disc was missing. And this was the first C.W. McCall I had ever seen on CD. Now, we've touched on this ultimate Halloween set on the, I think it was, first record ripoffs episode. This was missing one out of the three discs, but uh, who cares? I've already got it. Down below the CDs, we've got DVDs and multiple copies of one of the all-time great missed opportunities of a movie. And, well, uh, I guess it was bound to happen. First high school video yearbooks, and then synchronized swimming videos, and I don't even want to know where that madness has led us these days. Oh, our old buddy Yakov Smirnov, who keeps getting a better head of hair with age. It's weird. I've already got a few of his videos, but I don't remember buying them or anything. I guess Yakov Claus has been visiting me in the night, which terrifies me. I don't usually find eight tracks at this particular store, but they've got a nice little stash going today. Among the highlights are a couple of dubious looking copies of one of the Persuaders albums of Some Guys Have All the Luck fame, which Rod Stewart made a bigger hit out of like 10 years later. And uh, apparently, Peter, Paul, and Mary are real counterculture rock now. Or at least this tribute tape is. Uh, perversely, this is missing I Dig Rock and Roll Music. But uh, yeah, I am so adding that to the record ripoffs candidate pile. Otherwise, uh, the single most generic Pickwick tape I have ever seen 
Let It Be, which is just the title. It's not a ripoff of the full Beatles Let It Be album. Anyway, underneath that, another tribute tape, this time for The Carpenters. And I think this is going to make my fifth period-appropriate Carpenters tribute album. Otherwise, a handful of compilations and stuff, some looking more bootleggish than others, uh, like that Sonny James tape there. Now, a little farther down, I found Three Dog Night's first hits compilation, which was released only like halfway into their run. But I've already got all the albums in some way, shape, or form, and their double disc anthology to round up all the 45 versions, and uh, yeah, that thing is just trashed anyway. Now, the Kingsman's garage rock classic Louie Louie on Month's 4-track. And it seems to be missing some of the guts. I've got a few 4-track tapes, and uh, something is definitely missing from that one. And lastly, a very bootleggy looking and grammatically incorrect Mamas and the Papas compilation. Credence Alley? Trivial Pursuit SNL Edition. It ought to be a crime to put Tina Fey next to Gilda Radner. That is all. In the electronics, a supremely promising looking box with an RCA BW003 black and white camera inside. These are the cameras that you could hook up to your shiny new RCA Selectivision VHS deck way back when. According to Lab Guys World, this model is from 1978. VHS and these cameras were only introduced here in the US in 1977. So uh, yeah, this is a bit of home video history here. Now they wanted 35 bucks for it, and there were no complete units, certainly in box, on Fleabay as am I making this, so uh, yeah, I'm certainly going to test this out as best as I can in store. But uh, yeah, this is old school. Got a PL259 connector for the video end of things, you know, as opposed to a phono style jack. Now, they didn't have any TVs today, but uh, let's see if I can at least get this sucker to power up. Hey, success. No weird noises, no blue death smoke. Now, the Viticon may be shot on this, but uh, yeah, there's only one way for me to find out. And the haul from this store consists of three eight tracks, all record ripoffs candidates, a Carpenter's tribute, Let It Be, uh, not the Beatles album, and a Peter, Paul, and Mary tribute. Underneath that, we've got two CDs, one rather late period record ripoffs candidate, Mambo No. 5, and the semi-infamous Living in the 90s compilation. And of course, the RCA BW003, which works beautifully. It's now in the Ben's Junk queue. And the final haul for this episode consists of a Matrix brand quartz metronome, which indeed works. We've got two LPs, one from Public Image LTD, their live in Tokyo set, and a sound-alike of the Concert for Bangladesh album, which has got to be some sort of sin, and I think we'll end with a bit of Bangladesh today. We've got the Marx Brothers Animal Crackers on CED, just because I can, one VHS tape, Abbott and Costello's Christmas-ish appearance on the Colgate Comedy Hour back in the early 50s, five eight tracks, a quadraphonic country pop compilation on Capitol Records, a still-sealed Gene Tracy comedy album, a Peter, Paul, and Mary tribute album, a Carpenter's tribute album, and Let It Be, a general 1970s soundalike comp. Two CDs, Mambo No. 5 by the Countdown Singers, and living in the 90s. I guess I'm going to be rocking the Timmy T tonight. And last but not least, the RCA BW003 video camera. And the haul from this episode came out to about, after tax, $61. And that's going to be it for this installment of Archive Thrifting. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm out.
Hello? I must be going. And they came to say I must be going. I'm glad I came, but just the same, I must be going. La la.